Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part four of my real working Star Wars Gonk Power Droid. The aim of this project is to build a real working Star Wars power droid, which is basically a box that walks around on a pair of legs. I've chosen that character so I don't have to do any upper body development and I can actually concentrate on walking legs that work properly. So check out part one for a recap of some of my other bipedal projects. This is Android 12 and there's a number, as you can guess, of androids before that. And there's some recap footage in that first part. In part two, I looked at some development on mechanisms, and last time I actually built the legs. So these are based on parallelograms. This one still doesn't have its gears in, but essentially I've got a big gear that moves against the motor, so that these are the top and bottom of the legs that can move around. Now today we need to put the hips and ankles in, which move the other way. So that's gonna need some more motors and some gears, so we might as well get straight on with it. Here's the rough layout for the existing leg and I've decided to put this hinge on here. So the aim is that we'll have a hinge on the inside of the leg and that gives us a much bigger leverage angle to uh, put the track that it runs on with the motor on the outside rather than having that hinge point in the middle and then obviously we reduce that quite a bit. It does look like the foot's a bit big at the moment. It's gonna stick out the front more than the back and I wanna get that leverage angle as big as possible although I don't really want it to look like I've made the feet deliberately big to help it balance. So we may reduce that, we'll see how it goes. I've brought that in a bit and done the bottom of the hinges here. So we've got um, a thing there, we'll probably have a Tallman alloy bushing, the same as the knee joints eventually, but that's gonna run on a bit of six mil studding. There's the motor with a mount, so that's roughly the size of it. So obviously we need to work out where we can fit that. So I thought about putting the motor like this and then having a track that curves up the outside of it. Now I could put the motor stationary on the bottom plate and have the track attached to the foot, but obviously then to lean this right over, the foot is, uh, or the track is gonna have to go through the bottom plate. So I think it's better to have the motor attached to this and the track attached to the bottom. But obviously this looks like it's sticking out quite a bit. So I'm not sure about that really. It does look uh, quite wide in the ankles. So I made a mirror of it to have a look at, and um, yeah, it is too wide really. It would be really good at balancing, but it'll also look like I haven't really done anything too clever, and I don't really want to do that. This is going to be dynamically balanced using an inertial measurement unit. So I really want to reduce down the size of those feet there. So I decided to turn the motor like this so that it doesn't stick out as far and bring it in quite a bit closer to the ankle. So the ankles are wider at the top there. What I could really do with is some sort of linear actuator that slides down the outside. Um, it, it isn't really gonna look like the power droid does, which just has tubes for its legs, although it does have quite boxy feet. So I might get away with a bit of an exaggeration there. There's not really another way of fitting this to make it any more compact. So that's where the track needs to be to make this work. Obviously it'll have to have teeth on and the gear does run on the track there. So obviously I could have put the motor kind of sticking between the legs there um, if I'd redesigned this bottom and redesigned this. But uh, for now we're just gonna make it like this and see how that looks. So if we rotate this round, we can see that um, we get probably nearly 20 degrees of lean there, which is actually uh, far more than we need. And we get that in either direction and obviously that takes us right to the top of the track there, which is 20 degrees. So for normal walking, it's not gonna to need to do anything like this. So I may need to be able to make that track shorter, but obviously um, in the normal position, the track is as high as the motor anyway. So there's not much advantage to lying the motor down at the moment because they both come to the same height anyway. I could redesign it and make that more compact. And if the track was much shorter, then it would make sense to uh, sort of swivel this motor around and stick it somewhere inside the foot there but uh, we're still gonna need the track, so doesn't really help us at the moment. I've bolstered up a few things there. I made this bracket fit around this piece. The uh, new bracket that's fixed to the bottom of the leg is printed in two pieces there, so that um, I can print them both flat on the bed and then solvent weld them together. And they've all got holes in the bottom that correspond to the pegs in the top part so that I can align them correctly. I've also put obviously screw holes in the bottom of the feet here, and those go through into the track that I still need to put the teeth on, but we'll get the other parts printed and see how well that moves. Gonk droids have pretty square feet, so I'm leaving the bottom profile completely square. Obviously I could reprint another one if I need to, but I think on the whole that looks okay. It's quite compact, it's not too wide. It's longer at the front than the back, so I think I should get away with it. 
Here are some of the parts. So these have been printed both flat on the bed and then one turns up the other way, like so. So put the hinge on the bottom and have that piece overlap this side here where the motor mounts and so on. And then we've still got those peg holes for some three mil bits of steel that stick in the corresponding ones there so I can solve and weld it all together. So I need to make those tooth tracks and I'm still waiting for the bottom of the feet to print and then we can get it assembled. My tooth tracks are again made by basically getting that curved thing, cutting one of the teeth off the gear and then using the circular pattern tool to map them all round and then just taking the ones I need and merging them in. It looks about right again, and normally I'm pretty good at judging what the pitch should be. I've used 84 teeth in the complete circumference, but this time I've actually cut off a thin slither of it to do as a test print. We can run one of those gears up and down before I print this thing, and that's mainly because this thing is quite thick this time, so I don't want to waste too much time and plastic doing them through trial and error. Here are my test tracks. I printed two in the end. One has an extra tooth in the circumference, and actually that one seems to run pretty well. So if I pop this in here, we can see that gear runs quite smoothly over there. And there's minimal gaps in between the teeth. In fact, hardly any. The one with one less teeth, there's quite a bit of uh, wobble in there. If I don't push that in fully, you can see the gaps on the spaces between the teeth are slightly further apart. So that one seems to be pretty good. So that's the one I'm gonna use. Well, I fitted everything. I don't really like them is the first thing I'll say. They're kind of excessively big and excessively wide and it still looks like the foot's really wide and I'm cheating on balancing, which I kind of am in a way. At least it'll be to statically stand on one leg, which the previous androids couldn't do at all. So it'll be able to do tricks and things like that, um, which will be quite good. So at least I've got quite a good leverage angle and this um, has no problem driving the leg backwards and forwards. Of course, when you're actually walking and things, the hip joints that don't exist yet will work um, in parallel with the ankles and all of those four motors will work at once so that that's actually going to shift its mass side to side. So maybe I can get away with less here. I could reduce this size of course by moving the motor further in, redesigning the bottom of this to st stick the motor right in and having that track much shorter because it's a smaller radius. Or well, maybe I don't need to even lean that far. So I may come back and refine this in the future. Um, for now I'm going to leave it as it is. We'll give it a little test in a minute, but um, basically I don't even know if this is going to work or not. I suspect it is with feet that big, but when it does work and I've got the hips on and it's in motion, then I can come back and refine it rather than doing it now. I could do something as well like having an intermediate gear if I need more torque. So the motor drives a gear with a big gear and a small gear and that drives the track. Or I could put the motor right in the feet and make the feet deeper and have that drive a curved track underneath the bottom of the foot or something like that. But for now, as I say, I'm gonna leave them like this, get it working and come back and refine it later. These are the feet from Android 11, which work pretty well. And I covered this in the first episode of this project. And obviously all I've got there is a servo turning and a little peg, and then the leverage point is here to here. So it works in a similar way, although this couldn't lean over far enough to actually balance statically on one leg. So I'd have to have made that bigger and in fact, it would have to end up being the same height as the track I've just implemented, unless it's on a shorter radius. So uh, it swings and roundabouts, and there are other ways of making this more compact. But for now, I'm going to stick with what I've got to get it working. Whee, well, there's definitely enough torque in there to push the leg over. So not too many problems there. Let's just bring that back the other way a little bit. And of course, as I say, all those four motors will work together, so I'm not seeing that as being a problem in terms of power. It'll come as no surprise to see that the hips are in fact the ankles upside down, so we get exactly the same leverage angle, torque and everything else about them, and the motors move at the same speed. Um, the main thing I need to do is place these legs at the right distance, so that's 80 mil. I thought I'd do a little mock-up here, so I've just spaced these feet apart the same distance, which is 80 mil. I've just stacked some boxes on top so we can see what it'll maybe look like. So this is uh, just under a meter tall, so it's going to be a little bit, a little bit taller, and obviously the box will come down, you know, probably to just cover the top of the legs there. Obviously I can't do that because the box has got a bottom on it, so that's the sort of size, although I'm pretty sure these legs are too close together. Obviously if they did have tubes on them, with the roundness of the tubes they'd be touching, so perhaps we need to move those slightly further apart. So that's now 100mm apart. And I'm just going to look from over here. 
Hmm, it's kind of chunky. I think if they were slightly wider, the box was wider, that would probably look okay. The issue is, of course, as the wider the legs get apart, the harder it is to shift mass from one side to the other. It has to lean over far more. So I need to give that a thought and decide what to do. I've decided we're going halfway in between and 90 mil between the legs. Um, which should be all right to get tubes on there if I put them on and it looks all right. I've looked at quite a lot of pictures of gonk droids and um, essentially the legs are actually quite close together in the bottom of the box. There's only so close I can get them though. Um, obviously with those tubes on that will bring out the uh, the gap there a bit. So I've uh, just uh, put this box on so I can kind of see the scale of it. It's just over a metre tall and um, I think that looks just about right hopefully. Normally the legs are actually hardly sticking out of the bottom, the box is a lot lower in a lot of the pictures, so it's sort of more like that sort of scale, but um, obviously I quite like the legs to be seen. It may be the box has a cutaway in it, so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, that makes it quite a bit shorter actually though, to, uh, let's see, 924 mil, so just under a metre, but um, I might do a bit of artistic license and make mine slightly taller. So there we go, so now we just need to design that hip mechanism. What we need to do with the hips is allow the legs to actually rotate so it can turn on the spot and walk in a circle. And I wasn't going to put this feature in, I was going to come back and do it later, but since I'm building this whole thing I might as well do it first time. The axis will probably stay locked until I add a motor laser, but at least the mechanical axis is there. So uh, first of all I'm actually going to double up on the plates on the top here. So. With the feet I've noticed there's a bit of warp in them which is causing a gap between the gear and the track so I do need to put another plate on the bottom of the foot facing the other way basically printed the other way up on the print bed. So for the um, tops here I'm going to put two plates on and I've recessed all the screw holes there so that actually we can uh, bolt those things on. I want to have an axis where some vertical axis made of studding or whatever can run. So uh, basically they need to brace the whole leverage of the leg, so I need a kind of a higher point that I can run an axis through and that can connect in the middle to the rest of the body of the robot. So fleshing that out a bit more, obviously we've got some uh, cross braced supports there, the top pieces and the bottom pieces and obviously those axis will run between the two holes so it holds it nice and stable. We need to have something in the middle to run those through and that will be connected to the body. It's also the same width as the gap here between these two plates. So uh, that's actually going to stop the legs folding forwards. All that's going to happen is they're going to hinge backwards slightly. We only need about 5 or 10 degrees of movement if both of those shift open at the same time. So there should be plenty of space there. But we don't want them to ever cross so the toes point towards each other. So that block will extend down to brace it. So I've just extended that block out there. And you can see that's going to stop the legs touching, sort of folding forwards in the middle. We also need to have a kind of waist axis that allows mass to be shifted backwards and forwards for balancing. Obviously this can shift um, side to side with the ankle and hip joints, but forward to back it can't really do because it's always going to have the feet parallel on the hips and the knees parallel with the ground because it's made of parallelograms. So we need that additional hinge so that it can throw its weight backwards and forwards and this is what I did with Android 11. So I've hollowed out this block and made it into more of a box section. We in fact find that there's a big tool piece coming off the hinge bar and then there'll be a kind of spine coming up the back and between those we can put an actuator to pull the whole mass of the body backwards and forwards. So it's pretty much a copy straight off Android 11. So I've added lots of screw holes in here to screw this whole thing together. Also I forgot to mention I've got some points here. So we'll have the uh, actuator for rotating the legs will be something attached to this front of this green block and it'll have levers that come out and come to these points so it can push the legs apart and obviously they stop on the sides of the yellow parts as I said before to stop them going too far together. This is all the parts finally ready for printing. We've got all these holes in here. All of these uh, parts are in two layers so they can be solvent welded back to back and screwed together. We've got some other stuff going on with uh, some a kind of key thing here that this part fits into so that it's a nice tight solvent weld. I've also got screw holes to screw it all together so it all becomes square and again screw holes in the bottom of this plate to screw these red parts in and in all the places. I've left excessive screw holes everywhere for the spine to be attached and braced up here and pretty much everywhere I think I'll attach something in the future. I'm starting to lay the parts out for printing it's quite a few huge chunks to print. Um, these are pretty much the same parts as last time, but then we've got all of these red parts and all of these plates to print. And there's two of them, so they're probably not going to fit on the print bed at the same time.
Here come the main wedges for the hinges. These are the top and bottom plates for that very middle section. And these are the bits that fit directly onto the top of the thighs. They're exactly the same as the black parts I split in two and put on the bottom of the feet. Well, I got through printing all the parts. There was quite a lot of it. Obviously, some of these fit back to back to make one part, so I need to stick those together. And then we've got the same with those and those, the box piece of the front, and lots of other stuff. Those have fitted quite well, which is good. So I can just screw those together. Some of it I'll solvent weld, some of it I won't and hopefully I can fit it all together. Most of the major parts are assembled, so we've got these whole assemblies which have come out pretty well. I've solvent welded the parallel plates together and the rest is just screwed together at the moment in case I need to change it. That's the box that sits in the middle, so we need to assemble that with the tops and bottoms and we should be to fit all that together. It's all together in one piece, so as well as those joints that move the leg forward and backwards, we can of course split the legs and that splitting mechanism will fix on the front here and couple to these bolts. So it will eventually be a pusher that pushes those apart, probably by an even amount with a rotational thing with two rods, one that pushes each way. So for now, those are just gonna get cable tied together and I'll come back and put that mechanism in when I actually want to do that. First of all, I'll get it walking. So the mechanism seems pretty tough. I can pick this up by one leg here and the other leg stays in place. So that means these hip joints are strong enough to hold it so I'm pretty confident it can at least walk statically stable. I've just positioned all the motors there by going around them one by one and running them with a battery and a bit of wire to put it in one uh, position where it can balance on one leg. So we can see one foot's completely off the ground there and um, it's pretty stable at balancing on the other foot. All the joints hold their positions well, so this is quite good because it means it can be made to walk even if it's just statically stable. What that means is that it would basically go and lean over one way and shift all its weight over one foot and then it would move one leg forward and one leg backwards and then shift all its mass over the other way and then do the same thing again. So it wouldn't actually be balancing. What I'll eventually do is make it dynamically stable so we'll use an inertial measurement unit like in BB-8 that will measure the angle in space so then it can actually balance and that means it will be able to take much quicker steps and essentially it'll be able to calculate how to catch itself while it's falling onto the next foot. So that will basically involve dynamically altering probably the step length, the timing between steps, and also how far the legs are in and out so that it can balance. So using all of those three things and driving it from an inertial measurement unit, measuring the angle means we can make it walk dynamically stable, which is much more human-like. So next time I'm gonna be going and working on the upper body. So we've got another axis, remember, with that uh, kind of waist axis that goes backwards and forwards, and another motor that moves it. And that'll help it to throw its mass backwards and forwards because of course with these parallel legs, I can't actually do that by influencing the angle because it always keeps the body parallel with the ground, which means I don't have to solve any joint positions to keep it upright, but then to do that extra bit of balance, we need another axis. And that's also gonna be controlled by the inertial measurement unit. Also need to of course build the box structure and work out where to mount some electronics and the batteries and things like that. So we're gonna deal with that next time. And hopefully the episode after that, we should at least be able to make it move even if it's statically stable. So that's all for this time. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out my Patreon campaign for X-Robot superfans at patreon.com slash xrobots, where you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. All right, that's all for now.